The word stale is defined as when something is no longer fresh and can be used to describe a variety of things, particularly food. But when it's not used to describe food, it's often used to describe things like TV shows, jokes, and in this case, YouTube content. Now, real quick, answer this question. Why is it that you like to watch the YouTubers that you watch right now? If you said something like, Oh, I like their personality. No! The main reason you watch the YouTubers that you watch today is because of their content. And right from the very beginning, every YouTuber has to decide on what content they want to make and what they want to be known for. And obviously, there's a variety of content here on YouTube, and I'm not going to try and list everyone because that wouldn't satisfy your goldfish attention spans, which is why this whole video is trying to be as straight to the point as possible. They spend anywhere from 1 to 5 years making the same formulaic type of content in the same style for several years, and they manage to amass a good amount of viewers, until eventually, both them and the people watching will start to get sick of it, and their channel will inevitably decompose if they don't act upon it by taking a leap of faith into a new territory of content to see what works for them. Obviously, not everyone will like it, and they'll definitely lose some people along the way, but if they do find something that both them and the people watching enjoy, then that's good for them. For example, if you look at the careers of PewDiePie or Big Moist Critical, they both started off making gaming content for a number of years and then tried adding a considerable amount of variety to their content to try and stay fresh and, most importantly, entertaining. They never shied away from gaming content since PewDiePie still posts Minecraft Let's Plays occasionally, and Critical posts Twitch highlights of him playing games. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out due to either not acting before it's too late, or taking the leap of faith and their channel lands on their neck instead of the haystack. If anyone who was watching this video somehow remembers Scrubby, one of the many reaction channels who made the same reaction commentary videos in the style of Leafy's videos and managed to gain a million subs in a little over a year. But then once he started changing the format of his videos, everyone just started to slowly fade away, and now his channel is just the shallow corpse of what it originally was. But he did do what some people do in this case, and that's start up another channel where they make different content because they don't think that it will fit in with what they're making on their main channel. In Scrubby's case, his second channel is dedicated to making storytime videos, which definitely could have fit in with his main channel since he was already making those videos. But hey, guess he wanted a bit more money, and to be honest, that's fine. All the more power to him. But maintaining relevance on YouTube for many years is both difficult and stressful because, as a content creator, there's always that feeling that you have to constantly be coming up with new and interesting ideas for videos that relate to the kind of content that people initially subscribed for. And if you don't deliver videos that are interesting enough, you feel like you're letting those people down because oftentimes what someone finds interesting, others might find dull. When in reality, a lot of creators really shouldn't have to feel that stress. Especially if you're like me and don't have an upload schedule. But even I still feel that stress sometimes. Why? I don't know, maybe I'm just fucking stubborn. But if you're uploading a video once every week, every day, or even worse, two videos a day, then your content will go stale even faster. Case in point, literally anyone who tries to succeed on YouTube by making boring old Let's Plays! I don't mean to shit on anyone's dreams, but your channel really isn't gonna go anywhere or even make a full-time career out of it if you just upload unedited Let's Play episodes that are 30 minutes to an hour long every day. You're only wasting your time and energy by doing so. Or a more recent example, Topic Commentary. Specifically, making daily trending topic videos to try and gain traction through YouTube's algorithm. Now, contrary to popular belief, I really don't have an issue when it comes to these types of videos. I do see the huge benefit when it comes to making these types of videos as they're about topics that a lot of people are interested in, they're short and easy to make. But that's also part of the problem when it comes to these videos. Because of the fact that they're short and easy to make, a lot of these videos become outdated very quickly. Especially when it comes to YouTubers facing allegations before both sides have come out with their story. I think you can see where I'm going with this, but that's a story for another day. The point is, while these videos will earn them success in a short amount of time, those videos will go stale very quickly. Because as a lot of people have been suggesting, that once the algorithm stops favoring their type of content, they'll all fall into obscurity. Also, little side rant. I'm not in favor of using major anxiety to pass off criticism. Believe it or not, EVERYONE HAS FUCKING ANXIETY! I know it's hard to deal with, but I really don't have any other advice other than to just bend over and fucking take it. Alright, side brand over. 
But when a creator manages to achieve some relevance in the YouTube landscape, oftentimes they don't know how to react when they start to see a decline in their analytics. They just continue to stick to the same formula until everyone up and dips. And then for some reason, they get confused and blame the algorithm by saying that they got blacklisted or shadow banned. Like, oh no, why are people leaving me? Is it because I've been doing the same kinds of videos for years and people are starting to get bored with me? So they're going to find other creators that will entertain them because my videos are the fucking same? Nah, that can't be it. I'm being shadow banned by YouTube. Me. Out of a billion other channels on YouTube, I'm the one being shadow banned. Time to make a 30 minute video about my frustrations with YouTube and put I'm being shadow banned in the title. Hello guys. I'm sad to tell you all that my channel is being shadow banned. Fuck the YouTube algorithm, it's a fucking piece of shit. I don't know what else to do other than create the same content I have already been making for years because my dying audience really seems to enjoy that. I'm now starting a movement on change.org to fire the YouTube CEO because she is a fucking bitch ass whore who needs to be fired. Please like this video and subscribe because my dying channel needs the subscriptions and if you do I'll suck your tiny cock to pay my rent. I've seen this recurring theme with a fair number of YouTubers who have been making content anywhere from 5 years to almost a decade, and oftentimes I can't feel bad for them because if they've been making content for that long, they should know that making the same content doesn't always guarantee the success they initially had. Their channels just plateau, and then the only direction they go from there is DOWN 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 DOWN! Although one YouTuber who I have seen acknowledge the fact that their content has been going stale is Davey504 who initially got his start just uploading videos of him playing bass, and then started talking in his videos while also parodying clickbait YouTubers, which earned him even more success until the past few months where he started noticing a decline in viewership. He did address this in his real personality video and then acknowledges the fact that as his sub count gets bigger, he feels more and more pressure to create interesting videos. But he doesn't just blame the algorithm, and instead he says that he's responsible for the decline in his views because he couldn't keep his videos interesting enough for people to stick around. And as a fan of Davey's videos, I respect him a lot for acknowledging it. Because I don't think that many people put themselves in the shoes of the creator when it comes to thinking of video ideas. Again, going back to the unnecessary stress I mentioned earlier. As a matter of fact, you remember how earlier I praised PewDiePie for changing up his content? Well recently, I've started to notice people who have been saying that his content has started to become stale again. Who would have thunk? Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> I'm not sure what changes he'll make next, but to be honest, I don't even think he's gonna care because the guy has 100 million subs and at this point he's just doing YouTube for fun because I really don't think there's much left to achieve. I mean, if it took him just under a decade to reach 100 million, then it could very well take another decade just to reach 200 million or even longer. You know, if he's still doing YouTube at that point. And I know it's easy to call another YouTuber's content stale, but again, not a lot of people really put themselves in the creator's shoes. Or how about this? I think all the artistic people watching this video might be able to relate to this even more. Imagine you've made drawings or paintings that you put time and effort into and everyone loves them and they give you loads of praise for them. Then all of a sudden, someone or a few people straight up tell you that they think your art isn't good anymore. And it might hurt a bit, especially if it's coming from anyone who has been supporting you for a long time. And I like to think the same goes for content creators. Being told that your videos are getting stale or that they've gotten repetitive is something that not only worries me, but I'm sure worries a lot of other creators too. Because I know there are a ton of creators who try their hardest to make their content as entertaining as possible and to keep people watching. But sometimes you just have to suck it up and admit the fact that it doesn't matter how long it'll take for something to become stale. Just like how most foods have their expiration date, so does content. You won't enjoy every video a YouTuber uploads just like how you won't enjoy every episode of a TV show. But that doesn't mean you should give up on them entirely right away. The way I see it, if a YouTuber you enjoy all of a sudden decides to change their content, give them a shot, watch a few of those videos, give them feedback, and then decide if you want to give up on them. But at the end of the day, I'm just another creator on this website whose opinions really don't matter in the long run. I'm only here because I have absolutely nothing better to do, and because I haven't made a video in a few months. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell anyone how they should run their channel, but it should definitely be something to consider if you've been making the same formulaic content for years and you don't want your channel just to be an empty corpse. You don't owe your viewers anything, just like how your audience doesn't owe anything from you. And you can still make whatever videos you want because YouTube is called YouTube for a fucking reason. But the people watching are free to criticize their content or just stop watching altogether. And that's not really something that anyone who made YouTube their full-time job can do. 
Unless you're PewDiePie or Critical, obviously. Now, that shouldn't stop them from experimenting or listening to viewer feedback, because I think they should strive to find a balance of what they want to make and what the audience wants to see. But if they say something like, Oh, I don't care. M make whatever you want and I'll watch it. I hate to say it, but that's probably not the best advice to follow because it's not being specific enough. And if by any chance I've made anyone curious, no, this is not me announcing that I am changing content or anything like that because I enjoy making these videos a little too much for me to just up and dip. But it could happen one day. This video is really just a collection of thoughts that have plagued my mind during these past few months and I thought it could be a good video. It probably wasn't a good video and I know it was a bit of a mess, but hopefully it was worth your time. To end off this video, I'd like to put some questions into some content creators' minds if they just so happen to be watching, and you can answer these questions in the comments if you're really feeling confident. Are you happy with the content you're making? And how long do you think it'll be before you abandon ship? Thanks for watching, and remember, if you don't eat your meat, then you can't have any pudding. Cause how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Salutations, you hobgoblins. I know it's been a while, but the reason I've been gone for over four months is that I just felt like I needed to step back from everything revolving around this channel and just enjoy life before I become another miserable adult in society because I don't want to just take it for granted like a lot of people do. And if you're wondering if I'll disappear for another few months, well, I doubt this will surprise you, but I now have a list of video ideas that I plan to make for the rest of this year. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll be uploading these videos monthly because, as I said in my last video, I'm not going to care about that. But I will try just for the sake of entertainment. So that's all for now. Thanks again for watching, and, well, you get it. I, I shouldn't have to repeat myself.